Welcome to the channel and Medieval Kingdom Wars and this video is going to be about update 30 which was released on the 5th of October 2017 if you're watching this in the future. Now the video will also make reference to a hotfix that was released on the 7th of October that dealt with a number of balancing issues that were introduced as part of the update 30 and my congratulations to the devs for being so quick off the mark and addressing some of these issues I mean obviously it's a hot fix and things may change in the future and this is what I want to emphasize guys with these videos if you are watching them in the futures this game is in early access things are changing parameters are changing that's all part of the process of a game being in early access so what I'm saying now if you're watching this two three six months in the future be aware that many things could have changed now, I think the, there's no better way to induce this video than letting the devs actual introduction to the update do it for me. So I'm just going to read what they wrote. Update 30 is live. Today's update marks the first major milestone in Medieval Kingdom Wars journey through early access. With our 30th update, we have finally completed the work on the basic foundations of the grand campaign. Now with that grunt work behind us, it's time to get the fun features from diplomacy and trade to kingdoms and feudal hierarchy and quests and so much more. We've got a feeling that you'll love today's update with nearly 60 fixes and additions. Once again, it's a huge step forward for Medieval Kingdom Wars. Some of the bigger new features include unit transfer between armies and towns, as well as switching to realistic unit recruitments on the world map. And in addition, we have reworked how the battles and the RTS town management works with the addition of upkeep silver drain. So it is a big update, guys. I'm not going to bore you by going through every single minor change and so if you're really interested in that i will either put the full description into the video description or if it's too long i will put a link to the appropriate page on steam which will li list all the changes uh, bug fixes balancing and updating what i'm going to do in this video guys is talk about what i feel is the three key changes that came out of update 30 and the first one is the silver drain now you're either going to love it or hate it it, I think it's going to be very much uh, an issue that's going to bubble on. It's going to take a little while to get the balancing correct. The second one will be about the new army recruitment structure. And the third one is my kind of overview and a few comments on the changes and load balancing that was adopted with the research tree. So I think probably the best way to get into this, guys, is to kind of demonstrate the silver drain. And to do that, I've, I've prepared a few campaigns. Part of this is going to be jumping in and out of campaigns. And we're going to go to jolly old Portugal. Now, if you're new to the game, guys, Portugal is probably one of the toughest starts going from the perspective of a campaign. One of the better ones is France. We'll get to France in a minute, but I'm just, we're going to go to Portugal. There's a specific reason why I'm going to Portugal and i will see you on the campaign map okay guys welcome to the campaign map and this isn't a new campaign it, as you see it's running i've done a little bit of work on it now why is portugal a bit of a tough start well it's a level one settlement and it's actually kind of surrounded by hostiles we've got castile up here who off nine times out of ten will attack and then down here we've also got Madrid I think is it no Lisbon there we are I think Madrid's over here somewhere yeah I think Seville down here so it's not only is it a small start under pressure it also starts off in a pretty hostile area but from the purposes of this update it's quite an ideal campaign to start so I'm just going to click in here and I'm going to enter the city and here we are guys we are in a Porto this is the RTS building part of the game for any of you guys who are new to the game this is where you build up your settlement but you can see here a porto being a level one hamlet has got virtually nothing it's got limited building slots and well it's kind of the bottom of the totem pole but what you will see up here now in the top left is i've got 1800 gold because as part of the hot fix they actually doubled the amount of starting gold to give players who want to play the smaller factions a bit bigger chance to actually get things done and what you will see now is if you watch this i'm playing on medium and you'll see that this is every i think it's every six seconds or something i don't count i mean the the hotfix note says this i'm losing 20 gold a minute 
and so that's ticking down and what happens is eventually once that money's gone I will not be able to come into this screen until I've actually managed to get some more revenue so it's a kind of way of constricting the the, the time you spend on, on building to be honest as long as you've got a reasonable amount of cash on these small settlements you can build everything you want to actually get the settlement up and running obviously I've got issues with the armies because the army is very poor quality here and bits and pieces but I think that's adequate now if I kind of come back here I mean I just wanted to show you this tick I mean it's, it's not very much it's a, a very minor change but it will have significance when update 30 came out that was going down at minus six a time and the amount of start money was only 950 I think gold or silver I should correct it looks like gold but it's actually silver and that made developing the the settlement very very difficult I think they've also um, increased the tax rate a little bit so that the silver from your taxes build up quicker now what I'm going to do now guys is I'm going to pick a fight I'm not going to win it but simply because this is a, a very small army you can see 36 and if I the nearest settlement to me he's got an army of 46 but I'm just going to pick a fight here just for the purposes of demonstration so what we're going to do is come out here now the tick down for silver when it comes to battles relates to offensive battles only if you are attacked the tick down does not appear so you so you can defend as long as you want but if you actually attack Carrick ready to so sit sail no, no targets found. You've got to get a bit closer. They, as part of your Kareen Carrick standing ready. Okay, let's get try and get Any in here quick before. can never get the world sober. Just try to do it drunk, my lord. Uh, okay, I've got to Three do this. Three men tight to the midships, my lord. Cancel. Carrick oh. ready to Tack sit down. sail. Take off this. <laughs> okay, that should do it. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. I was I was doing some general defending the some of the other campaigns that I'll be showing you later in the video and I was using the auto resolve to to kind of speed through the process you can see now we're now attacking guys and the tick downs exactly the same minus two coming here um, and of course we got no chance of winning simply because we've got a tiny little army and our our army here is is basically trash you can see there I mean our entire army consists of seven militia and we don't actually have any because I lost that battle before we don't actually have any surf so I'd have to train a couple of surfs and you can see we've got no houses so we can't win the battle all we've got is this very very small oh, we've got a couple of hunters as well so but this is purely for demonstration guys to show you the tick down what I, what I will say guys is my impression of this silver tick that I think the devs are on the right track but I think to make it more realistic and I know some of you guys out there are going to hate me for what I'm about to say and I apologize but this is purely my personal opinion I think that tick down should reflect the size of the settlement so like somewhere like a Porto should get minus two but somewhere like Paris may get minus six and as your empire builds that cost the way to look at that is a kind of administration corruption cost that builds so the bigger you get the more costs you get but then the bigger you get the more tax you're going to get in so if you've already conquered most of Europe you're going to get lots of tax rolling in and I think that's relevant and I think also with the relation to battles that if you've got a small army you should have a small tick down if you've got a massive 30 part army I think 30 is the maximum size although I think they, they talk about increasing it and I agree with that but if you've got a massive army in the field it takes cost and maintenance to actually support and I can see there's an argument that the bigger and more sophisticated your army is the, the more it should cost to support in the field and to me that puts a challenge in and that brings me on to another comment about this mechanism is and I'm just going to demonstrate it see at the moment the only way I can forfeit this battle is to go back to the campaign map now which means I will suffer a defeat now what I would like to see is some form especially in relation to siege battles an option to lift the siege because in I mean this game is about the medieval era and during the medieval era quite often armies would lay siege to 
cities. I'm trying to think of a famous siege, probably around the, the time of um, Agincourt and all that. The British and the French routinely laid siege to settlements and they, they couldn't win and they stayed there. And of course, death and disease would suddenly start to build up and then they had to lift the siege. And I think that would be a very good addition to compensate for the lack of silver to actually allow you to lift the siege. You can take small losses, but, but compared to the losses you take with going down to a, a forfeiting the battle and made defeat, I mean, it could also apply to a battle that you get into a battle and that would, you suddenly think, oh, I've gone in too far and, and you can retreat. And I think that mechanic would be very useful also for new players because if, if you don't understand this gold, this silver tick down, players will be tempted to get into a siege and think, well, I've just got to play long enough to, to, to win. And I think that just will take away some of the frustration of the silver that you can go in, you can mount an attack, lay a siege, and then realise you're not going to go. And you don't. And then you, you can avoid this choice of, do I sit here, do I run out of silver, or do I do what I'm just about to do now, which is go back to the campaign map and take massive losses. And here we are, guys. We're we're back on the campaign map. And just to show you now, my armies get absolutely there. These guys are going to come in and attack. And the Bordeaux army, wait, sometimes it lags a little bit. They stand here. Uh, I'm just going to auto-resolve that. I'm just going to get kind of completely, um, yeah. So I've now lost the settlement. And this is a good lead into, looks like these guys are going to have a bit of a set to actually. <laughs> but to this is now a good lead into the the next bit of this video which is about recruitment now this is kind of the extreme to, to be able to recruit troops now you've got to be close to a city and you can only recruit the troops next to the city and as i've just shown you there guys that because uh, i don't own a city anymore because porto was my only there this army is basically shot now because it, the only way I can recruit anything is actually to attack one of these armies here, which are actually bigger than me. I mean, I've got ready to I'm 20. Sail. So the only chance of this Your army Kareem surviving standing ready. would for me to be to wander off Truman and try and find a... Ah, there we are. So the only way I could survive is for me to run over here but it's still a high risk strategy because even a tier t one hamlet in uh, owned by the ai often has a fairly substantial army so i'm just going to show you this guys and i mean it's a bit of a distraction from the update but it's a consequence of the update in the fact that you can't recruit recruit troops so we're just going to get here they've also slowed down the speed which things but we can actually speed up a little bit i think three is the highest and what we'll do is we'll attack the town you can see salamanca has got a an army defensive army of 36 so the only way we could win this is by fighting it manually and trying to build up enough forces and and if by actually doing oh i mean i'll just do it again guys just to show you how to lose consistent battles poor old porto or portugal sorry now, this is where things get a bit icky, because what I've effectively Looking got to do point, now yeah. is I've got nine units here, but I can't recruit anyone, so which means if I come here, I can't train the surf, because it says you do not have enough resources, i.e. I do not have there. So what I, the only way I could actually do this Looking for a is point, we are. kill units. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, these small armies don't really need rams, so and we'd have to get rid of another one. <laughs> Ready to hunt your grace. Right, so I've now got it down to the level where I can actually train a surf. I know it's silly, guys, and if any of you guys are laughing at me, but I just want to illustrate that point that if, if you lose your settlement, that's the only way you can actually get your army recruiting. But of course now over here we've got a massive army and I've got an army that I've torn apart and I've only got six people. So effectively all we've got to do now is hope to build up resources. In fact, truthfully, you can't win. And there we are guys, we're back on the map.
a single surf. And I think we've lost this campaign. Trim and take to their midships, but my lighter. That has been the only way, because I say you can't recruit units because we don't have a town. Anyway, let's get out of this campaign to save me any more embarrassment. And what we're going to do is look at some real recruitment now. So here we are, guys. We're back on the main menu. And what I'm going to do now is I think we're going to go to Ireland just to show you the what you'd call the basic recruitment options when first start a campaign. So here we are, guys. We're, we're on the map, and you can see here I've built up the settlements here. Just get close that off. And my army is stood Truman outside to the of midships, my Zach Tam. Care and the way recruitment now works is that when you click click recruitments, as in, in Porto, I wasn't next to a settlement, so I couldn't recruit. You have to choose the town. Now, you can only recruit troops of the level of your buildings within the settlement so like here tam i've deliberately done this so that there's actually no military buildings in here at all it's a basic building with just the the main structural bits inside it and as you can see all we can recruit is militia serfs hunters chickens and pigs for some curious reason i still can't quite get my head around why pigs and that are actually in still in the army but it probably makes sense to someone but you can see where before update 30, you could recruit all the troops into the army. Of course, the other key factor, guys, is these are expensive. So you need to work on your settlements. Do it. Uh, I think I'm just going to have to alter resolve that. If they lose, I'm going to be really... It's quite often... Yeah, Limerick is safe. Good. And that's good because I want to show you something about that in a minute. I mean, I, I don't know if I can actually... Can I pause it? So that maybe they will stop. Take to their midships, now... My later. The other way you can Care actually gain troops sale. is transfer troops. So what you can do, again, you have to be next to a settlement and you've got this option now. So like, I mean, truthfully, a garrison doesn't need a a siege but battering ram. I, I'm not sure why garrisons have bar battering rams here, but what we could do also is transfer over here. And of course, it goes the opposite way as well. So we could put some militia in there. So... This is the key mechanism for what you'd call for town-based recruitment. And that is the fact that... <sighs> I'm going to lose that, aren't I? Yep. Ah, that's annoying. Because what I wanted to show you guys is what a level 2 settlement looked like. But... Of course, now we can't do a level 2 settlement because they've captured Limerick. But what I can do is go in and show you what a level 3 settlement looks like now. Although, to be honest, a level 2 settlement is simply just the tower's support round. So I can talk through it in, in, in this settlement here. And here we are, guys. Just to show you, a level 2 settlement just has these towers... I mean, they're not mu much use. They're just purely decorative. You can't fire. You can't put troops in them. I'm not sure why you'd actually need them. And, of course, a level 3 settlement has a palisade around it. And as you can see here, the buildings here, of all this all this settlement contains is a barn. And you've got the manor here where you can recruit your hunters and militia, which is the base units you've got here. And of course, I've got an iron mill. So the way you can actually make troops available, I think I've got the resources because I've built, rebuilt some up. You can build a couple of hunters in here or militia. And of course, once you've got a barracks, I'll, I'll demonstrate that in a little minute on another campaign. What you can do, guys, is build these troops up. They, they, they do actually build quite pretty quickly, actually. And then, of course, once you go back onto the main campaign map, so what happens, guys, is when you train troops in the settlement, they join the garrison, and then what you Your can actually do then is ready. come here, nope, 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 recruit troops, transfer units from Tam, and these these are the two units that I trained because they the, the trained units always seem to appear at the bottom, and you can actually transfer units like that. So that is a demonstration of how you can actually recruit and transfer troops and just to kind of show you if I go back to the main menu and 
Brigade campaign. Here we are guys, we're playing the French and this is Orleans. And well, I'm just gonna go straight in. Well, now let's show you the so what I'm gonna Your show you guys care now. Like standing if ready. I go to recruit units now, and it's, of course it says there, and because I've built a basic barracks here, I can now pay for and recruit Billman and Maceman into this army although this army is already full you can see i've been already practicing recruiting plus the fact that paris gets a better army initially and garrison compared to poor old porto again you can transfer just to demonstrate guys so you can transfer you get a cart and we actually go into the city and here we are guys, we're in the city. I actually built the barracks up here. If you're new to the game, this is what you'd call a city level map. Now, unlike the the Hamlet maps, these aren't upgradable as to level. This Paris is a level eight city, but what you can do is actually upgrade all the fortifications up to stone. And what I've done is I've built a kind of a barracks here which gives me the ability to train macemen and then as we do the researchers which I will talk about in a minute that actually will improve the recruitment capabilities and recruitment options and of course that would be reflected on the army that's actually currently stood and next to the city and you can see in the top left now this is ticking down the minus two and this comes back to what I was saying that Paris has a gets more taxation and it's a bigger city so my inclination is that the minus six that was ticking down before the hotfix is relevant i mean i built all this up fairly quickly all right true it's not everything i haven't upgraded all the buildings but i i built a lot of this up before the hotfix came out and i was doing it with minus six and I, you can still see i still got 1327 1, gold now so i think that sliding scale will work if, if it's if it's balanced properly and it reflects the income but I think that's enough I'm just gonna go back to the the main map again so here are guys we're back outside Orleans and your Kareem care standing here and of course just to prove you guys I can recruit well we can recruit a billman into the army so that's giving me a fairly powerful army there to keep away the hostiles while I talk about the next and the final part of what the, the, was introduced in the update. And right, guys, we've got this art army annoying us at the moment. Your Kareem Kerak standing ready. And I think we're just gonna attack them and get rid of them just to get away. Yeah, there we are. And this is actually a good thing because trim and take to them. Didn't actually get any reward for that. That's a bit annoying. Carrick ready to set sail. Because what normally when you win a battle, you should get a reward. Ready. We've got fifty-seven here. Let's just let's train up some units actually. Group units, okay. I've got quite a lot of cash. Let me just see if I can d confirm this because I've. I've no, Something might be a bit broken here. And let's just build this up to... Uh, oh, no, we've got no money left. Okay. And I think, what's the... 53... 46... Now, you've got to be very careful with the auto-resolve here, guys, because... Any damn fool can navigate the world sober. If you Just go for the auto resolve, sometimes even though you've got a bigger army than the defending army, the auto resolve has a bias, is probably the correct way. So let's attack the town. Tours, I'm going to auto resolve it. Yeah, that's what I'm after, guys. This, by fighting battles, you get this here. So we've gained four common wax and gathered refined from bees, useful domestic and commercial things. And of course we conquered the settlement. ready to set sail. Now, why did I do that? Well, it relates to research here. So here we are, guys. We're actually on the research map now. Now, ac across the top here, you will see the items that are required by research. 
Now, at the moment, the only way you can get them is by actually buying them. And, of course, I've spent all my gold equipping that army to, to fight the battle. And at the moment, it's quite expensive. And what I'm hoping is that maybe when the economy is implemented, that this will actually... There'll be some way to maybe produce some of these items. You know, like maybe we will get hides from the barn by slaughtering the cattle and maybe tools from the blacksmith or something like that but that's all to be seen in the future now the the main issue i have with the research at the moment is the fact that it's still a little bit unbalanced and and yes they've given extra money to the smaller one i mean this is mainly related to the this the, when if you start with a smaller faction that this you don't get all these resources because I've been fighting quite a few battles in this campaign because I kept the AI kept attacking. I've gained like four bottles of wine. Now, what I had to do originally was buy these resources to get that. This is quite a useful tech to research at the beginning because it speeds up your serfs, which means you, you gather resources quicker. Another good one that you need to get for straight away is to get your economy up and running and to get to here. So you need to get these first two done very quickly. But again, you can see it is, this takes two wax seals, two tools, and I think that's spices. So, so to me, that's a bit high in relation to yeah, you know, what you'd call basic techs. And and the thing is, is as you go along, if I kind of show the military where I'd be expecting a higher penalty, like to get some of these higher units and things like that, and to decreasing costs, it stays the same. So, so my feeling is that I do like the research. I'm not whinging completely, but I just think this needs to be rebalanced a bit, especially with the relation to the items just to make it look a slightly bit more kind of, well, just to improve the immersion. If you imagine that when you're starting off and you've got a small village hamlet level one, these texts should relate to developing a, a level one hamlet, you know, kind of getting your agriculture up and growing it. I mean, you wouldn't expect to be recruiting hospital lights in a, a small hamlet. So I think that just needs to be balanced a little bit in that sense there. And I think that's all there. I think it's going to come, guys. I, I, I think the developers are listening to us and kind of taking on board the feedback. I think they, they want to get a nice, balanced, immersive game. So if, you, if I return back to that kind of initial introduction that they gave, where, if we go back to the main menu, where they were saying that they're looking forward to doing the diplomacy and so the fun bits, as they called it. And I think the economy and building and, and doing the research all fits into that mold so i am looking forward to those changes and i think i've rambled on quite a long time and i think this is where i'm going to kind of wind this video up i think i've rambled on quite a lot and i've probably confused the heck out of you guys and while i will reiterate there's a lot of other load balancing bug fixes and in this in update 30 some of them is are related to balancing units and uh, if you any of you guys who've been playing the game have got used to running down militia with your cavalry that has changed slightly they've nerfed the cavalry's ability to to run down or trample units which is slightly disappointing for me because i was quite enjoying fighting battles and sending my cavalry in in and just trampling all over the enemy and destroying them and that's actually changed now it's not so much fun it still works but it's not as effective as it was but then the cavalry was a little bit op and again that's all part of the process of this being in early access balancing the units getting the experience correct and there again there are other changes similar to that in the listing but the full listing will either be in the video description or a link to steam where you can go and read it all for yourself. I will be trying to put together some follow-up videos to this on specific elements and maybe a mini campaign. What I do want to show you guys is the new building levels that, you know, for the different tiers of the cities, maybe I'll do a video like that. But I think this is where I'm going to wind it up. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Hope you found it interesting. Any comments, questions, feel free to ask. I will try and answer them. If I can't, well were discuss it together and or somebody else may be able to answer them for me because i'm not claiming to be an expert on this game i'm still 
kind of learning as I go along and I'm, I'm not the best at the battles so there's probably a lot of other people really good at battles and I've rambled on long enough so this is where I'm going to leave it hope you enjoyed the video and until next time whatever you do enjoy your gaming